Welcome back. As we mentioned a bit earlier, there is a good chance that right now you are in the midst of or certainly about to face one of the most powerful and widespread pre-Christmas winter storms in a generation. The storm is going to bring dangerously cold temperatures to roughly 143 million Americans from as far west as Colorado all the way to the east coast. Blizzard conditions are also expected between now and Sunday for much of the upper Midwest and northeast the storm has already dumped several inches of snow in Wisconsin and Illinois. Those pictures from Madison earlier today has forced airlines to cancel more than 2,000 flights today nationwide with additional cancellations expected again tomorrow, all during what is one of the busiest travel weeks of the year. And joining me now is the Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley, whose district includes part of the Chicago area. He's also a co-chair of the Congressional Ukraine Caucus. Congressman Quigley, having spent my college years in Chicago and having been the child of Chicagoans, I know you guys get tough winters, but this is a really messy and ugly several days that you're facing with some frigid temperatures ahead. What's it looking like outside right now? Yeah, it's coming. Uh, and Chicago, as you know, can handle it. If, it's, if this was happening in the city you're at, uh, it'd be paralyzed for a month. But ha having said that, this is very dangerous and people need to take care uh, I'm particularly concerned about those who are homeless, uh, those who have to work outside, and they have our gratitude. And it, it's a reminder we always like to give this time of year. When it gets that cold, just because your pet has a fur coat, it doesn't mean they should be out there for an extended period of time. Watch out for them, too. So this yeah, is a, a dangerous storm. It's a good reminder as you look at it. I'm just browsing my phone right now, and it says that tomorrow morning when folks wake up in Chicago, it's going to be minus 9 degrees, and that doesn't include the wind chill, which whips off of Lake Michigan there. So it's going to be awfully cold. We also have some pictures we can show you from southwest Michigan, Benton Harbor. Shaq Brewster, our colleague, has been driving through the mess that's there as well. Let me ask you about Ukraine, if I can, another country where the weather has been weaponized in the words of President Zelensky and President Biden right now with Vladimir Putin trying to plunge that trying to plunge that country into the depths of cold and darkness right now. You were with President Zelensky yesterday. Any chance to speak to him? Uh, I reminded him that we spoke at length in July when I was in Kiev about the uh, how the war was going and what Ukraine needed to move forward. Uh, so we didn't have as long a time yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. but he was pumped up, I think very enthused. And we talked a little bit about, you know, the aid package and our thoughts about its chances of going forward. And finally, uh, I, I couldn't help as a member who formed the, the Ukraine, I mean, uh, the hockey caucus. I asked him, a good Ukrainian has got to play hockey. And he said, not since childhood, but he thinks he still could if he had to. Yeah, I'm guessing the Blackhawks could use a couple guys on the front line, right? So let me ask you about this new tranche. It looks like the $45 billion are going to get through the House, likely with that vote, coming tomorrow morning as part of this giant omnibus. Do you think this is the last tranche, as we describe it, the last sort of U.S. aid that's going to be approved for Ukraine with the Republicans taking over the House come a couple weeks from now? Well, look, I think one of the reasons it's so big and it's happening now is that to make sure that there isn't a, a gap there because of uh, some difference in opinion. Well, let me let me say this: uh, the vast majority of the Democratic Caucus favors uh, an ongoing effort to help Ukraine uh, to ultimate victory. But I still think the majority of the Republican Caucus feels the same way. There's a there's a rift there. It's the you know, I guess you'd call it the Reagan wing versus the whatever you want to call the the newer wing of the Republican yeah. Party clearly different than Reagan and mo much more isolationist. But uh, I think that, let's just say we didn't do this. I still believe if push came to shove, the Congress would have ongoing support until ultimate victory. Congressman Quigley, what do you say to those Republicans, Kevin McCarthy, likely the next Speaker of the House, saying that no more blank checks for Ukraine in the new year? He expresses that reservation, as have others, in even tougher terms on the Republican side of the aisle, because they say, you know, the U.S. could be facing a recession coming up right now, and this is effectively a case of misplaced, misplaced priorities where the money shouldn't be going to Ukraine, but should be going to some domestic priorities at home. Why is that wrong? Yeah, first, we can do more than one thing at a time. Uh, the war in Ukraine is 
helping Ukraine, it's the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do. You know, I thought it was uh, particularly helpful when uh, President Zelensky referenced FDR's speech uh, after Pearl Harbor and quoted from it. You know, I thought he quoted from the wrong speech because uh, FDR's last inaugural, I think he said the essence of why we fought in the Second World War and why we should help Ukraine now. He said, uh, we have learned that we cannot live alone at peace, that our well-being is dependent on the well-being of other nations far away. If anyone imagines that Putin would have stopped at Ukraine and not gone to Eastern and Central Europe and threatened others, that the core of our allies, and that Beijing wouldn't be looking at Taiwan uh, and saying, well, this will be easy, that you know, the West won't come to their aid. So there's a lot at stake here, asking ourselves why we fought the Second World War. Unfortunately, it's much of the same turf and for many of the same reasons. Yeah, yesterday's speech by Vladimir Zelensky, a lot like that of Winston Churchill back during the Second World War this month, 81 years ago. Congressman Mike Quigley, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, a good Hanukkah to all those celebrating the Chicagoland area. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.